Hey guys, it's Stefania from Merch.com and this week I wanted to make a merchanting review of the special attacks that are coming up in uh, the Legacy beta tomorrow on uh, Monday the 16th June. Uh, it's also known as a combat improvements beta and uh, basically we're going to be able to test the new special attacks that are coming out. Uh, a bunch of them are the same as they were before EOC but there are also a few new things and the idea of this beta is of course that everything gets adjusted and uh, made in a fair way so uh, everything is correct um, people have been asking me a lot of questions about what kind of uh, investments they should make in these weapons uh, what they can expect of the prices in the long and the short term so why not make a video about it and uh, give you my opinion about them you do have to keep in mind I am invested as well of course uh, but I will do my best to be as objective as possible and just look at all the special attacks rationally uh, I'll mostly focus on the most popular weapons and the ones people ask most questions about. So uh, yeah, let's get into that. I'll start off by opening the historical link here, uh, because quite a few things changed. Might be interesting to look at that. Uh, so yeah, starting off with the dragon weapons. Now, before EOC, it was really common to do like uh, a, a 4 or 500 hit with a dragon uh, mace, for example, to get like double... Uh, what was it double 40 well double 400 specs with the dragon dagger those were pretty high but possible i don't see this being the same way anymore now because they will really be treated as a level 60 weapon um which means they will be less powerful than the level 70 and 80 weapons and so on so checks will definitely be scaling that so it's not going to be the case like back then that every pk is going to have like a whip and a dragon dagger for example people are really going to have to use better weapons than that uh, if they are a higher level. For lower lower levels, these weapons will of course be awesome to use, um, but just not wor worthy of an investment because a lot of them have been around their high elk price or uh, the limit is just too low. Uh, so they will be nice for PKing, but I just don't see them working out as a good investment. We'll just move over them here since they're all pretty much the same. Until we get to Dragon Claws, now I've been asked a lot of questions about Dragon Claws, but the same thing applies to them. They are a level 60 weapon. Their special attack is still awesome, but they are not going to be as powerful as they were back then. It's not going to be the preferred spec weapon for every PKer or PVMer, unless they are a lower level. Um, what is very interesting about these is that uh, they are two weapons now, so the offhand Dragon Claw is going to be lost upon death. Uh, when you are rushing while you're peaking, for example. So I see the offhand Dragon Claw uh, rising a little bit more because of that, because people will need to buy it back more often. And it will also likely have more volatility and fluctuation. Uh, so that's quite nice about that. Uh, it will be a nice special attack weapon for lower level still, but uh, is it worth an investment? Well, people already invested in it before this point. Back then it was worth it. Right now I would not really say so. We'll skip over to Dragon Pickaxe and Hatchet here and head over to the God Swords. And I've probably been asked most questions about these, uh, mainly the Armadale God Sword, of course. Now, Armadale God Sword has already been uh, rising a lot. And what I find most important to consider an investment in special attack weapons right now is uh, looking up uh, what their price was right before EOC was introduced. So you can basically see what their realistic. Uh, supply and demand was back then and as you can see that was uh, in November 2012 which was about an 18 million price. Uh, you do have to keep in mind that AGS has been in game for seven years now and uh, of course ever since EOC it's been dropped for almost two years now like one and a half ish. Uh, so it already had two pretty big rises here and a lot of profit has been made by a lot of people and myself included. What you do have to keep in mind is that uh, it's pretty hard for AGS to sustain a higher price uh, right now than it was back then, because back in EOC it was effectively the strongest special attack weapon. That will be the same case right now, until level 90 weapons will get a special attack as well. So uh, for the time being, it's pretty good to flip and short-term invest in Armadale Godswords, though you have to be wary because a lot of people are in on it and the prices can move really quickly. Uh, so a lot of profit can be made with risks, and uh, in the long term it is obviously going to go down. Uh, it might still be a good PKing weapon then, because it's cheaper. Um, but once level 90 weapons get special attacks, uh, then these are going to drop in popularity, because 
uh, no PVMer is going to need this anymore. And uh, well, there's just a lot of supply for just BKers. Uh, so that's it for the Armadale Godsword. Uh, might as well look into the Saradomen Godsword while we are at it. It's been the most popular uh, and most expensive godsword since EOC was introduced because it has a healing over time effect while you uh, use it to uh, kill monsters. So uh, as you can see, it's pretty much tripled in price over the past year. And right now here, it's been having a bit of a harder time because people know that AGS is going to be more in demand again over this one. Though I don't really see the Saradomen Godsword crashing all that much because it's still a really useful weapon but just more in uh, EOC than in legacy mode. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look, that's actually another page right here. So the Bandos Godsword is next. Um, they pretty much destroyed this. I really think that they're going to adjust this special attack, they're going to buff it because dealing 15% more damage and only draining 10% is nowhere near as good as it was back in the day. Uh, back in the day, you could like lower their defense with uh, the the amount of damage you hit. So if you hit like a 50, you would drop their defense by 50. Um, and that is really what it needs to have, because if th it doesn't have that, then nobody is going to use this weapon. It's really inferior in terms of uh, special attack compared to Armadale Godsword. Uh, and then a Zamorak Godsword. People ask me if this will be worth anything. Well, back before EOC, it was quite frequently used in castle wars but that's really it it doesn't really have a whole lot of use so again the special attack is rather inferior you can only perform it once in a row so i don't really see zamorak godsword going anywhere specific uh, then the abyssal whip this is really interesting because abyssal whips used to have a 25 percent uh, energy drain and right now that is boosted to 100 but there's not really any places where People would want to sacrifice their special attack bar to stop someone from running. Maybe if you're peeking in the deep wilderness and you're in a group and you're chasing one person, you would want to drain their special attack, uh, their, their run energy, sorry. Maybe in that case, but people would just prefer to launch a special attack and force the other person to eat. And then the episode Vine Whip is just a matter of running away from the special and then it's wasted. So these are just not going to go anywhere, and they're not worth investing in, simply put. Then we get to the Granite Mall. This is, uh, well, this was, and it will probably be, one of the most popular special attack weapons for lower levels. Uh, it's just not going to be interesting for higher levels anymore, since it's about a level 50 to 55 weapon, I believe. I think it's 55, yep. Uh, so some someone with like 90 attack or strength is not going to want to use a level 50 weapon they can do a lot more damage with a dragon weapon or a level 70 weapon so uh, there it just isn't any point and there are so many granite malls in game and they have such a low investable limit that it's not going to be worth using uh, then karasis is something you cannot invest in since it's not tradable but its special attack also seems to be nerfed because it will deal damage to uh, people around you instead of focus it on one person. Uh, so we can skip over that. Uh, and then the Saradomen Sword. Uh, it was really popular for strength training back in the day. I'm not really sure if that's going to proceed. They might have a rise, but definitely not for the special attack because it's just not that powerful. There are better special attacks out there. And then we get to Stasha's Warhammer and Vesta's Longsword. Now these are... Uh, also talked about a lot. Uh, they were very popular before EOC as well. The Stasius Warhammer, of course, for PVM, uh, because people would be uh, using the spec on something like Corporeal Beast to drain its uh, defense. Uh, the problem is right now that if you uh, use abilities, you can use a lot of defensive abilities to heal up. Uh, you can use uh, damage over time uh, abilities and all those things, and you wouldn't be able to use those if you are using legacy mode and, and an expensive, degradable Stasius Warhammer that uh, disappears after an hour. So uh, I don't really see this going anywhere specifically, unless it's really useful at the new boss that will be coming up in the future. Uh, other than that, it's just too expensive uh, to really want to use. I don't see bossing becoming more effective because of it again. Um, so I wouldn't really put my hopes in this one. It's quite risky, uh, though it does have a very low supply. And then the Vesta's Longsword. This was mainly used for PKing and, uh, of course, staking. 
Uh, I'm not really sure how much this one is going to do. The supply is, of course, low. Uh, it just depends on how popular uh, staking will become again uh, and PKing as well. Um, in the short term, this will be an interesting item to watch, uh, probably to flip and to short term invest in. But as soon as the level 90 weapons get specials, then this one is just not going to be uh, as in demand anymore. Right now it is still one of the most powerful special attack weapons since it's level 78 and you can do four of them and uh, hit pretty high. It, it just has the same special attack as a dragon longsword but just a much higher level. Um, the thing is though with level 90 weapons they will be getting special attacks that is confirmed but it's not going to be in the short term. It's going to take Jagex a while to balance it all out. So for the time being looking at items like an AGS and a Vesta's longsword will be interesting, you just have to be careful in the long term. Then we get to the Vesta Spear, I believe that's actually a new special attack, but uh, it's a nice idea, but it's not really going to work out. This is not going to be an expensive weapon, uh, because it's just not convincing enough, it's not powerful enough. Well, we can skip over all of these, because they're not really interesting for anyone and just too cheap. And then we get to the ranged weapons, uh, and the main one here is of course the Dark Bow, now, back in the day, it actually had, uh, I'm going to have to look that up, uh, I believe it had like 55 or 65% uh, required for, where is it here, for a special attack, yep. So, uh, it, it used to be 55, then it got to 65, which meant that you could not do two special attacks in a row. But that has changed now because it has 50% adrenaline, and it is also boosted to level 70 because of the Elder Bow release. Uh, which means that this weapon is going to be more useful again. The only problem with Dark Bows is that uh, they have a low investable limit per 4 hours and uh, they're just not worth a whole lot, only 100k here. And uh, they are coming from uh, pre-EOC levels of 170k, which doesn't really make it worth it, but for PKers, especially lower levels, this will be a very nice item because you're not risking much and you can deal a lot of damage. Uh, I can just skip over these Magic Short Bows here, they're just this is just old stuff basically, they're level 50 now I believe, um, can skip over that. Though it's interesting that a magic composite bow got a bit of love from Jagex and got its own special attack because it used to be, nobody really understood why it was in game basically. Um, then we get to Morrigans and uh, those are great, they were also great before EOC. Um, I see people, like especially PKers, they might use one of these as a, like uh, maybe they would start off with like an enchanted bolt special like Dragon Bolts E, then switch to one of these and do that special and then switch to a Dark Bow to finish it off because a Dark Bow is pretty slow uh, with one attack per seven seconds or so. So that could be a nice combo that PKers might use but uh, I don't really see them using this all that much unless they are, for example, ranged staking uh, those kind of things, but I believe they also have, uh, let me look it up, a fairly low limit of like a hundred, uh, yep, which means that they have about uh, two mil per four hours, they have been rising here gradually for a while, um, but it's not really amazing, they do come from a lot higher levels, but it's pretty slow to invest in these and they have a low supply, so if you would like to do that, it's a possibility, uh, it's just not really worth it in my eyes. So we can move on here, the hand cannons, obviously these have been worth hardly anything for a very long time now. A lot of people were asking me about them, but I didn't really understand it because they're only worth 13k. Um, they come from about, like, even before EOC was uh, introduced, they were already dropping a lot. Like, when EOC was introduced, they were not even worth 20k anymore. That's around here, I believe, yeah. They're about 15k. That's also what they are right now, around the high elk level. So I don't really understand why people think that these are going to rise a lot. Um, but yeah, if you want to invest in something like this, feel free. I just don't see it working out, personally. That's it for ranged. Um, well, Samurai Bow is an option, but you cannot do two special attacks in a row, and it's a level 55 weapon, so again you might as well pick a dark bow over this, it's not really any use. Now we get to magic weapons finally. The Staff of Light, the special, it's not for PKing, nobody would want to fight you if you actually used this. Um, plus it would be a massive waste of 100% special. Uh, so maybe they will use this again at Rock Lobster Barraging or Dagonoth Barraging or whatever. 
but other than that, no point. Um, then we get to Armadale Battlestaff, and this one is actually quite interesting. It doesn't have an image. It says, perform a barrage of magical attacks at your opponent. Well, from what I heard, that uh, that that special attack is actually going to be the equivalent of a Dragon Claw special. So four attacks in a row at 50% uh, special. So you can do eight attacks in total. And the interesting part about that is, if this becomes like um, a Dragon Claw spec, at a level 77 weapon, you can declaw spec people from a distance, though at a bit slower rate because uh, claws are faster than an armadil battle stuff. But being able to spec people from a distance like that with so many hits is quite dangerous. Uh, it's also the best magic weapon at this point, other than the Zuriel staff. Uh, so I see this being uh, relatively popular, at least for a while still, until uh, the higher weapons get special attacks as well. If we look at its price, it didn't have a special attack pre-EOC, which means that it actually didn't crash here when EOC was released. It rose to about 60 mil. Then it did have a pretty deep crash. But in overall here, it's remained pretty high because uh, its supply is relatively low and it is still a very useful weapon, both in uh, EOC and it will be in Legacy as well, in my opinion. Uh, lately here, it's been rising a bit. Uh, so people are slowly picking up on this. It all depends on how powerful it'll really be. Uh, I do see this being used quite a bit because it's a one-handed weapon which you can protect upon death. And uh, you can deal quite a bit of damage and the special attack is good enough to do KOs. So uh, we'll see how that end up, ends up. And then we get to Zuriel Staff. It's a nice special attack, but I kind of wonder about slowing down your opponent's attack speed. Because when you deal 200 weapon damage, I would imagine that they will start eating and they're not really going to attack you back, so what exactly is the point of slowing their attacks down? That's a bit strange in my opinion. Um, yeah, I don't really see much use in that. You also only get one shot uh, at killing your opponent with a 200% hit at most. So uh, it could be useful, but it's also a bit pricey to use. Uh, someone has been hoarding these for a very long time, so I personally wouldn't invest in them at this point because you'll only be making that guy or girl profit. Um, so yeah, Zuriel staff is nice, but not really the thing, you know? I see stuff like an Armadale Battle Staff being more popular than that. Then we get to the Penance Strident, or the Master version. Uh, it's a level 70 weapon, but it's kind of like the Fighter Tor, so it takes a lot of time to get, so it's not really something you would want to risk, uh, because it's a pain to get it back, of course. The same thing goes for an Iben Staff. You can deal a lot of damage with it, but would you really want to bother getting that back if you died? Uh, that's not really that awesome. So I see other stuff being more popular than these guys. And uh, yeah, I can skip over the God Staffs here. They pretty much uh, added the regular effect back in the day as a special attack now. It's not really anything people would want to use their special power on. Uh, so we can just move on here. And then we end up at the Mind Spike uh, Air, which is of course the most powerful weapon in game, which will totally revolutionize PKing and PVMing. And that sums up this video. I hope I taught you something new uh, about the investments. If you invested in anything and uh, you disagree with my point of view, feel free to post it in the comments. Uh, you don't need to tell me what you invested in, but if you think that I was wrong about anything I said, just let me know. Uh, congratulations for making it this far in the video since it's quite lengthy. Um, that makes you pretty awesome and I hope it was worth your time. I wish you all of the best with your merchanting and uh, yeah, I'll see you all again next week for another video. Take care guys.